In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of Samuel. We're going to be continuing our series in Samuel. And one of the things that you really need to, to know about this, in case you didn't see our last episode, is that what's going on now is that Samuel has come to Bethlehem, the home of King David. He is there to anoint David. He doesn't know David yet, so he doesn't know who he's going to be anointing. But he has come here to the house of Jesse for the purpose of fulfilling that task. And so this is where we see this story start off in 1 Samuel 16, verses 6 through 10, which says, When they entered, he looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For God sees not as man sees, for God looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel, and he said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Next Jesse made Shammah, uh, Shammah pass by, and he said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Thus Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. We don't really hear a whole lot about David's brothers, this actually is one of the very few passages where we do get to hear a little bit about them. We don't know a whole lot about them, but we know that his oldest brother, the one that originally Samuel believed to be God's chosen, is apparently a big strapping boy that looks like he could be the leader. He looks like he could be a king. And yet, he's not the one chosen. So the question then becomes, why is God passing on David's brothers? What's wrong with David's brothers? Apparently, they do have the look, and this is not something that is completely ridiculous or unprecedented in Samuel's mind. Remember, that is who Saul was. Saul was a tall, good-looking young man that had a commanding presence that you could see as a king, and so Samuel's done this before. He's the one who anointed Saul. He sees a similar kind of caricature popping up before him. He goes, Oh, that's got to be the guy, obviously. I mean, he's, he's obviously the oldest. He's the one that just looks the part. This is the thing, though. We know why God didn't choose David's brothers. And that's because we have hindsight. We know that God chose David because David was the one that was most suited for the job. And looking back through history... I mean, granted, we don't have like a, a, you know, a what-if crystal that we could just look into and tell what would have happened if this had happened. You know, we don't have that ability. But God has hindsight and foresight. Since time is all happening at the same time for him, since he exists outside of time and, and basically holds all of time in his hand, then God has perfect foresight, hindsight, everything. And so he can not only see the situation and how it would play out if, if this particular thing happened, he can see every possible eventuality out of every situation. So if God makes a decision like this, it must be because God knew what would happen if he appointed any of the other brothers to king other than David. He saw all of those situations and he says, David's my guy. He's the one I want to pick. But that's not the rationale that he gives when he's speaking to Samuel. Yes, all of that is true. I'm not saying that that's incorrect. But he says, ultimately, the reason that he chooses David is because, Samuel, you're looking at the outward appearance. I'm looking at the heart. I'm seeing the kind of person that this boy is, not just who he was. Now, does that mean that David's brothers would have been terrible kings? Not necessarily. They might have been good kings. We don't know. But David was the best choice. Out of all of the people that were there, David was the one that was going to make the best king, the best leader for God's people, and God knew that, and that's why he picked him. But this is a great example of how sometimes God's wisdom just doesn't make sense to us. From a human perspective, there are a lot of times in the Scripture where a human being would have made a very, very different choice 
than God did. That looking at the situation, we would have gone, ah, let's go a different direction with that. But God has wisdom that we don't. He has foresight that we don't. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Because the rationale given here is not, well, Samuel, I can see the future, and so I know who's going to be the better king. That's not what he says. What he says is, I can see who these people are. I can see the heart. And I'm telling you, he's not the best candidate his little brother is. And I think one thing that that really speaks to the human condition on, I think that really the message that we're supposed to take away from this is that God sees things differently than we do. That when God makes decisions that we don't necessarily understand or, or we don't really get the math that God had to go to get there, there's a good reason for it. We may not see it. We may not know it. We may never know it on the side of eternity and maybe not even in the next one. But if God makes a decision, if he puts somebody in a particular situation, if he gives us a burden to carry, he puts somebody in our life, whatever it is, when God's providence interacts in our lives, it's intentional and God has our best interest in heart and he knows how that scenario is going to play out. That doesn't mean we always handle it correctly, but he knows how each situation is going to play, to play out and that means... First of all, that God sees potential, where we only see what's right in front of us. I mean, Samuel had to just judge based on what he was going on, and there's nothing wrong with that. But Samuel, first of all, he hasn't even seen David yet. But Samuel was looking at who they are now. Maybe there's some of David's other brothers that are a little bit younger than the oldest one. They would have also made good kings and maybe even grown up to be more impressive and, and better looking and, and more like a leader than the eldest brother. But Samuel couldn't judge based on that. He had to judge based on, you know, what was going on right in front of him because he's a human being and he has limited sight just like us. God's not limited in that way. You see, when God gives us a task or puts us in a role that he wants us in, remember that he's not just based, basing that on the person that we are that day when he sets that in motion. He may be giving us a burden that's way too heavy to carry at the time, but he knows we're going to grow and develop as a result of that, and eventually we'll get to the point to where we can handle it. Because God can see our potential and sees not only who we are right now, but who we will become, God has the ability to do that in a way that we just can't understand. Not in this life, anyway. And I think also... One thing that it should caution us on, a lesson that we could take from this, is that human beings are pretty darn easy to deceive. People can look differently than they actually are. Now, again, I'm not saying that David's brothers would have been bad kings necessarily. Maybe they would have been really good. But the point is, what this illustrates is that because mankind is looking at human beings and not at the heart of people, it's easy for us to misjudge them. I mean, if you don't believe this, just watch any guy that's around a pretty woman around his same age if they're both single i mean the threshold for being deceived is pretty darn high with most guys with that like they they will trust somebody like that because they want to and i'm sure it's true in the reverse i'm just speaking from the perspective of a guy because you know that's what i have experience in but understanding that and knowing that we have frailties, there are things we can't see, and we will misjudge people based on their appearance. That is something that is going to help us in the future, because if we're aware of that, and we can remember that God sees on the heart, we can really solidify our trust in Him, and that He knows best, and that if He puts a person in our life or takes them out of our life, that there was a good reason for that. You see, ultimately, I think that the big takeaway from this, the big lesson that we need to walk home with, is that when God enters our life and puts us in a situation, He is doing so because we're supposed to be there. Whether it's a combination of all the things that we've talked about tonight, because He knows the situation, He knows how it's going to play out, He knows every eventuality that is going to happen, He knows our potential and knows the person that we are going to be with, the big idea, the big takeaway from that is, if I'm in this position, it's because God wants me here. And if God wants me here, He made me well-equipped. I am adequate to take on this task that God has given me because He would not put me in this situation if I weren't. 
That doesn't mean that we don't need a lot of help from God on that. That doesn't mean we're not going to need help from others or anything like that. But what it does mean is whenever there's something that we feel is just overwhelming or we, we can't get past it or why would God do this to us, remember that God knows you and he knows the situation. And if you are in this position, if he has given you a burden to bear, first of all, he's going to help you bear it. But second of all, he wouldn't have put anything on you that he didn't already know that you could handle. And it's not just burdens. If he puts you in a situation, it's because he wants you there. He put David there because he wanted David to lead his people. At the time, he put Saul there because he knew that he wanted Saul, at least for a time, to rule his people. He put the Apostle Peter in the way of, at the time and the place and the era in human history, that he knew he was needed because that's where he wanted him. And that's true of the other apostles and every other human being that has ever existed. We're here because it's where God wants us to be. And that's encouraging. Stay the course, friends. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.